Hi, my name is Linda Gavordo, and I'm here to talk about college earning college credits in high school. And there's much to talk about, so let's just jump right in. The biggest question I get asked is why? You know, there's lots of talk about AP and Running Start and community college and why? Why would we push or encourage our students to earn college credits in high school? Well, there's multiple reasons. First uh, and foremost is probably financial. Being able to earn credits in high school is fewer credits that you have to pay for when they go to university. So most credits are transferable. It depends which institutions you're talking about transferring between and uh, how many credits and in what areas. But in general, most college credits earned in high school are transferable to a university, meaning that you have fewer university credits to earn in order to get that bachelor's degree. Uh, it also shows competitiveness for students who are particularly entering uh, competitive programs or elite colleges that are asking themselves, how do I make myself competitive with other students? One of the things that happens in admissions offices is uh, admissions officers ask themselves, what did this student do in high school to challenge themselves? And certainly attending college classes while in high school is one way of showing that they have challenged themselves. Uh, another advantage can be higher level learning in a high school or in homeschool there are sometimes limits of how far a student can go in a subject many times that's calculus one um, sometimes a parent may not be able to teach at, at a higher level than that or outside classes are not available at a higher level uh, it allows students to be able to take for example calculus one two three four as well as differential equations linear algebra, uh, if a student is very advanced in a subject and looking to go deeper, attending college, community college in high school can give them those opportunities. My own son was interested in going on to be a physics major, and rather than just being able to take the introductory level physics, basic level physics taught in high school, even at an AP level, he was able to take three quarters of engineering physics, which went much further than he would have been able to get in a different setting. Another thing that happens by earning college credits in high school is uh, you have priority registration when you move on to another university. Particularly, this is important for public universities. So in Washington, we have six public universities, and their graduation rates are affected by how often you can get all the classes that you need. So you're not really guaranteed to graduate in four years. Uh, UW, U University of Washington, Seattle has a four-year graduation rate in the low 60s. That's 60% of kids who start as freshmen graduate in four years. Uh, some of the other state colleges have lower levels than that for four-year graduation rates. And some of the reason is students being able to get their classes in the order that they need them. Uh, when you have classes, when you have college credits coming in, you have more priority in registration. You have a greater opportunity to get your classes in the order that you need them and then be able to graduate at an earlier date. Who can earn college credits in high school? Anyone. Anyone can. Uh, there are some age considerations depending on what method of earning those credits you choose what combination of um, community college or AP classes or online classes. Um, there's, 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 there are different age limits to those things, but some can be earned as early as ninth grade. Options for earning credits. So how do you earn college credits in high school? Running Start or other in-person dual enrollment options. So Running Start is a Washington program. Uh, in addition to Running Start, we have other programs within Washington, which I will talk about in a few moments, that are where students go to the community college and attend classes. Uh, 
college in the high school is another option, CIH. So most high schools offer uh, at least in some basic classes, English, science, social studies, offer a college in the high school option where they have an agreement with a local community college and they're able to teach some of their classes that get college accreditation. My own, my own kids did this. Two of my students went to Monroe High School to take chemistry, and it was the same chemistry class that they would have offered in the high school. It's just that this one particular teacher had an arrangement with Everett Community College that his classes were considered college in the high school. I paid a small tuition fee to Everett Community College, and my kids got they got a credit from Monroe High School and college credits from Everett Community College. We were using the, the high school as a part-time enrollment, so they weren't actually you know, going to high school except for that class, but that was a way to earn a college credit while in high school. In addition, there are online courses, online, what are called MOOCs, Massive Online Open Courseware, uh, things like edX and MIT and um, University of Arizona's Global Freshman Academy. There are quite a few options for online courses. Some of those are not for credit. You can take the class and then put it on your homeschool transcript as a high school credit. But some of the online courses have the opportunity to attach college, college credit to them. AP and IB, and I'm going to talk about those in detail in a minute, and CLEP, which is another form of testing uh, for uh, college credits. So those are the ways that we do it, and I'm going to go into detail a little bit about those now. So Running Start, as I mentioned, is a Washington-only program that is a funding program that pays the tuition for high school juniors and seniors to attend community college classes. The local high schools are the gatekeepers for your eligibility. So they must sign a form every quarter that says you're eligible for Running Start, but that's all they do for you. You're not under their supervision. You're not required to take the classes that they might want you to take. Um, they are simply the per people who determine that you are a junior or senior eligible for Running Start. So what to do to start with Running Start is you start at the community college, you enroll, you do your placement, you attend their orientation, and then you take your paperwork back to the local high school, get signed off on it, and you're on your way to Running Start. The program pays for up to 15 credits per quarter, and that is fall quarter, winter quarter, and spring quarter, of junior and senior years. So it's six consecutive quarters. You can take one, two, or three classes per quarter because each class is five college credits, which equals one high school credit. Uh, you can choose how much to take. They will pay up to 15 credits per quarter. If you take more, you, you can take more, although I will tell you it's a very heavy load. You pay the tuition if you take more. And occasionally you'll have a class that will put you over. I think one of my sons took a chemistry class that was a six credit class. So he had 16 credits instead of 15 credits one quarter. And we wound up paying just a small amount of tuition that covered that overage because the Running Start program pays 15 credits. The family still buys the books, pays some fees that can vary from institution to institution and provides transportation. So um, bus, parking, whatever it would be for your student to get to a community college, the family would be responsible for that. It's important to realize that you do not have to meet high school graduation requirements. You are not seeking a diploma from the high school that is signing off on your paperwork. So if a student is in a high school doing Running Start, the classes they choose must be meeting their graduation requirements. Because homeschoolers don't have graduation requirements, Homeschoolers can choose to take whatever classes that they want. And what they need to make clear with the high school when you go to get your form signed with them is that you're not seeking the high school diploma. And that is what allows you to take whatever classes you choose when you're a part of Running Start. Uh, students who do attend Running Start as high school students may earn a high school diploma from the community college 
if they earn an associate degree. Uh, anyone in Washington, actually, who earns an associate degree is eligible for a high school diploma. It's simply a checkbox on the, the application for your degree. And when they issue the degree, they issue the degree and the high school diploma right with it. And it comes from whatever community college you've attended for Running Start. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, but what does that mean? Does that make them a transfer student when they move on to college? And the answer to that is no. Uh, there used to be some gray area in this, but it's more or less settled to any college classes taken before high school graduation. The student is still considered a freshman when they apply to university. If they take any college classes after high school graduation, then they're considered a transfer student and would need to apply through that process to attend university. That doesn't, it doesn't matter how many credits they have. As long as the credits have been accumulated before high school graduation, they are still considered a freshman. And that can be a positive thing because as freshmen, they get that freshman treatment. There's more housing available, there's more uh, scholarship available, they get to go to for freshman orientation and learn about their college, all those things that uh, transfer students are treated in a different way. And usually our kids coming out of high school, going to university, they're still young and they need that uh, freshman support. So that's a good thing that they are still considered freshmen for entrance purposes. So what happens is they apply through the freshman process and then their credits get applied after they're accepted and decide to matriculate. And then they actually have junior either sophomore or junior status with the university, but it doesn't always mean they've met prerequisites. It, it just helps them uh, and those credits are transferable, but it's not a one-to-one, -one, they're going to be a junior if they earn an associate degree sort of thing uh, because they haven't always met prerequisites. Uh, Running Start's a great program. I encourage people to consider the pros and cons carefully for each student. Uh, students, you know, we're talking young, 11th grade students can be as young as 15 or 16. They are going into a classroom of community college, which can have students anywhere from 15 or 16 uh, up until their 50s or 60s. They can have um, lots of mature material can be presented in classes. Um, they, the biggest thing I think is that students have to be able to see themselves as peers with those adults and others in the classroom. So that's something to consider to make sure that your student is ready for Reading Start, that they're ready to be in that setting. But if they are, it's a fabulous opportunity for students to work uh, in a classroom setting, work in group settings, be able to dig deeper into curriculum that they may be interested in. Other dual enrollment options beyond Running Start. So this is other options for going to a community college and taking classes. Many other community colleges in Washington uh, have what are either called a CEO or an open door uh, program. They, they may call it something else, but it is a high school diploma recovery program. And in general, those programs are designed for students who have dropped out of high school but want to, want to continue their education. Sometimes those programs work well for homeschoolers, particularly those who need a little, um, more like a walking start instead of a running start, need a little more scaffolding, a little more support. These programs work at a different pace than running start. So sometimes those are uh, good to look at. I recommend if you're considering it, you go to the orientation or online the orientation for both the diploma recovery program and the running start program to try to evaluate which is going to be best for your student that's also something you can call me about and i'm happy to talk about other dual enrollment options college in the high school i already spoke about mooc credit options uh, i already spoke about but those are other ways to get dual enrollment, which means they are enrolled in high school and college and earning credits for both at the same time. Okay. The other thing that gets talked about a lot, I get a lot of questions about what is advanced placement AP? What is the difference between AP and Running Start? So let's launch on that. 
AP is a college board program, college board being the people who run the SAT and, and this program and several others. They are advanced classes taught in high schools. And what happens is you're taking a class at an introductory college level while in high school and earning your high school credit. At the end of the school year, there's a single test and determining what you place on that test determines your potential credit for college, college credits. So not all colleges accept all AP tests and depending on what you score, you may or may not get the credit. That's a little different than Running Start where if you pass the class, you're earning the college credit. Uh, AP is considered challenging oneself. So going back to that idea of why do it, there is definitely challenge. Um, there can be some issues with that single high stakes test. In the case of homeschoolers, they don't have to actually take the class in the high school, although they can as a part-time student, but they may self-study for the subjects and take the test. It's not required for college admissions. They don't Nowhere does it say you need to have, it's not on the checklist of things that you must do, but it is used to show challenge and admissions officers do look at whether students have had AP. I tend to think of AP classes as interchangeable with dual enrollment and you certainly don't need to do the same subject in both. They are sort of two different ways to earn college credits in classes in high school. Um, one thing that's important to note, homeschoolers may not list the AP designation on their transcripts for coursework unless they get that cleared through the college board. Um, I suggest that you list honors on your transcript, uh, but you can put your test scores on your transcript. So you can say, oh, they had AP chemistry and they got a five, but you can't say on the transcript of courses taken, you can't say that they had AP chemistry unless you they take it in the high school or you get your course approved by the college board. Uh, IB, International Baccalaureate, is a similar program to advanced placement. However, they are there is no way to take the IB tests without having taken IB courses. So that would imply then a student enrolling in um, a high school which is kind of not what we're talking about here in terms of homeschoolers and ways for homeschoolers to earn college credits in high school. But I wanted to at least mention what the IB program is, which is an international baccalaureate. It's a specialty, a specialty diploma um, that has specific requirements and testing that goes with it, like AP, uh, in order to earn credits for college. The college level exam program, the CLEP program, is a way to test by proficiency for a subject and earn college credits. It's not as widely accepted by institutions as AP or dual enrollment. So you have to, if you're going to plan on CLEP as a method of earning college credits in high school, you would want to match up and make sure that the institutions you're looking at, your student applying to, accept CLEP testing. They do offer CLEP testing in a wide variety of subjects and they're generally designed for people who have learned subjects or material through their life experience or through their work experience. Uh, and they're re-entering college. And this is a way for, for example, someone who's been in the military and taken classes or had training in a given area may have gotten enough training and knowledge in an area to be awarded college credit for it. And they would take the CLEP exam. Well, many homeschoolers have done that. They've focused on, an, on a subject or an area or an interest area, and they've garnered enough knowledge to be able to pass this test and earn college credit for it. So it's certainly worth looking into. Uh, and you, it, it's it also a college board program. So if you go to the college board website and look for CLEP or just Google CLEP, it, you can find uh, specifics on what subjects they cover and how to go about signing up for that testing. In summary, college credits in high school can be very valuable. They can be earned in a variety of ways and none of those are unique. So you can be doing one thing while you're doing something else. So they're, they're not unique that you can't have 
running start classes, but also take a CLEP exam in a different subject, for example. You don't need to do the same one in each subject because then you would earn the same college credits going forward for the same classes. Um, universities look on favorably, but the ultimate credit is a case by case by the institutions, except within Washington. And this is a question I get asked a lot and we'll take a moment to explain a little further. Within Washington, there is an agreement between our public universities and our community college and technical colleges that the credits are transferable between those universities with no, um, no real limitations. Basically, they'll accept all the credits that you earn. If your student goes to a non-public school in Washington or a public or private school out of Washington, the credit that is transferable is generally looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. I will say most of your credits will be accepted. They may not always be on a one-to-one, -one, and it may be that they need to look at exactly what you've taken. An example here is um, my daughter earned 65 quarter credits from Cascadia College in Washington on Running Start. She went out of state to a private university in Florida that works on semester system, and they gave her about 45 semester credits in exchange for her 65 quarter credits. And some of those things, they asked for a syllabus or information from what had been covered in the class in order to make sure that they could give her credit for what would have been taught if she had taken it at her school. So sometimes there's a little bit of negotiation or a little bit of information that needs to go back and forth. But in general, most of your credits are going to be transferable. There are a few colleges who don't take credits and you can work with someone like myself or another college type consultant who can help you sort that out. Um, there are a few who don't allow credits that are used for graduation to be, high school graduation to be used as college credits and that can be sorted out as well. But in general, credits are transferable even to out-of-state universities. That's sort of a big myth that, that I wanted to bust. Um, if you have any further questions about college credits in the high school, uh, sort of sorting out these mysteries, there's lots of acronyms, there's lots of uh, programs, there's lots of different ways to look at it. Feel free to contact me. My uh, contact information is up on the screen on this last slide, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.